Well, good morning, family. Good morning. Let's stand together. And if you're watching online, let's worship together. Come on. Let's sing together. I praise in the valley. Praise on the mountain. I praise when I'm sure. Praise when I'm down in. I praise when outnumbered. Praise when surrounded. Cause praise is the water. My enemies drown in. Come on, church. As long as I'm breathing.
on, we've come to give him praise. Amen, church. Come on, let's praise him this morning. We praise the great name of Jesus. How awesome and mighty he is. And so today we give him glory. We give him honor. We give him worship. Come on, let's worship together. Fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, 
to heaven. Let's lift our hands to heaven. At the end here, you're watching online. We lift our hands. It's a sign of surrender to the Lord. Saying, Lord, today we are yours. Oh, you've been so good. In every season, you've been good. In generation to generation, you've been faithful. And we know today, you're fighting for Oh, the God of angel armies is on your side today. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you are. And Lord, you are good. I feel it in my heart to just take a couple moments, just you and God right now. I know a lot of things are going on in the world, but right now is a moment between you and the Creator.
on church to recall moments where I thought God failed and if you're human like me there have been some moments in your life where you ask yourself God where were you has anybody asked God God where were you when I was at the lowest point in my life did not feel like waking up in the morning God where were you you and you know what's so interesting is that all of us have had that moment yet we're all still standing let me tell you where he was he was right with you every step of the way and even when the enemy wanted to steal kill and destroy God said no weapon formed against you shall prosper he's fighting for you he's fighting for you this 
when I sing this, it has a whole different, it has a special meaning. That's why y'all see me jumping and dancing the way that I am. Because when I sing this, it's got a special meaning because I've seen with my own eyes that he will never fail. I've seen with my own eyes, he has never lost a battle. And even when the circumstances look like God is going to lose, let me tell you something, he has already won. He's already victorious. So when I sing this, it means something. I say, Christ is my firm foundation. The rock on which I stand. When everything around me is I never Why? Come on. Because I put my faith in Jesus. He's never let me down. Father in heaven, we're so grateful for you and that in every season you've been so good and even when it did not look like it, God, you were fighting for us. Lord, you were shielding us from attacks that we could not even see and God, you were protecting us for the Bible says no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And Lord, thank you that you're fighting for us, that even when uh, danger comes to our side, Lord, that you are with us. For the Bible said, a thousand fall at my side and 10,000 at my right hand, but it will not come nigh to my dwelling because Lord Jesus, you are with us and you are our great defender. For the Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run in and are saved. And so today, Lord, we thank you for your safety, your provision, and your power. It is in Jesus' name, and everyone say amen. Aren't you so thankful to be at church today? Come on, come on, people of God, come on, come on. Oh, well, you, you may be seated. Turn to the person next to you, say it's so good to see you at church. So good to see you at church. If you're joining us online, welcome, welcome here. So excited that you are here today. I've got something very quickly and then I want to get to the message. As Pastor Rick, he's got a powerful word, a challenging word for us today. And when I say challenging, I really do mean challenging. So y'all get ready. Y'all get ready now because we're going to grow together today. Amen, church? We're going to grow together. I'm so excited. Hey, we had our serve team luau this past Friday. It was absolutely incredible. I know some of you guys were here. You know it was an unforgettable experience. And Nong and Seika really put that together. Can we give it up for Nong and Sega? Y'all know y'all know those names. They really put that together. It was incredible. The serve team is one of the best communities we have at this church. So look, this is your time to join a serve team. We need more people in kids ministry. Some of you got kids. And I want to say to you today, if you've got kids, feel free to check them in the kids ministry, our new kids ministry. It's been incredible. Pastor Nate is doing such a good job. Kids are learning and kids are being saved. Yeah. 
Kids are receiving salvation, so it's incredible. Make sure your children don't miss that. It's an awesome opportunity for them to connect to others and be able to be taught on their level. So it's so, so cool. And if you've got babies in here with you, hey, we love your babies. We love your kids. And if they start praising God really, really loud in the middle of the time where nobody else is praising, that's okay. We have a mother's room for you, okay? So just, just take them right out and the service is streamed live in there. So you're not gonna miss anything. We want you to be able to feel comfortable coming to church and bringing your kids to church. This is Family Christian Center, okay? So we want you to bring your families here. We love your kids and we wanna make sure it's a safe space for you and your children. So we want you to enjoy the gospel because we really enjoy. How many love this church? You love this church, don't you? So we want you to be able to enjoy Sunday mornings because it's awesome. It's an awesome time of worship together. So we're going to have a great message. As I said, it's going to be so cool, so powerful. So join me. Let's get ready for the message. Good morning and welcome to church. My name is Rebecca, and I'm so happy that you have chosen to spend your Sunday with us. If you are involved in Great Kids in any way, listen up. If you serve, have a kid in Great Kids, or you are just a kid at heart, we have a night planned just for you. As summer comes to an end, join us for a fun night with family as we watch a movie together on the big screen. We'll have popcorn, snacks, drinks, and entertainment. All we need is for you to show up. Can't wait to see you there. We are excited to announce Joe Sengel, the author and creator of the I Was Broke, Now I'm Not Financial Learning Experience to our church on August 11th. Joe will be preaching at all three services, sharing his inspiring journey and practical wisdom on financial stewardship. Additionally, at 5 p.m., he will be hosting a free financial learning class designed to equip you with the tools and strategies for financial success. Please listen up for more information now. I felt like this heavy burden, like, you know, there was no way out. I felt like I was in a hole. I would climb up, but then it would fall back down. 77% of Americans feel anxious about their finances. Less than half of Americans have a sufficient emergency fund. And here's what I know. If you don't have an emergency fund, you are always having two problems. You have the alternator broke down problem and the money problem. Proverbs 15:22 says plans fail for lack of counsel. But with many advisors, they succeed. Financial confidence is within reach. Join us and learn how to build a financial foundation that honors God and that will stand the test of time. This, it's just like the first step like to really getting you on track. It's, it's just such a great, it's like a game plan. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Well, friends, I am so excited to be headed back to your great church and to serve you and your great leaders at Family Christian Center. I'm so fired up. Man, we have become truly like family. And many of you may not know me, however, and I wanted to introduce myself. My name is Joe Sengel, and I've been invited to come back and talk about money. Now, I know you're really excited that I'm gonna talk about money, but I don't know if you've noticed, inflation's been out of control lately. Rates have been out of control. Prices, forget about it. But God's word is clear that when we apply his spiritual principles in practical ways in our life, the Lord will put his blessing upon it. And I'm gonna be with you the weekend of August 11th to teach straight from God's word how we can navigate challenging times like this and not only survive, but thrive. I hope you'll make plans to join me, not only for the weekend services, but for our equipping workshop where we're gonna take some time to show you how to do a budget that actually works how to save money, how to invest. I can't wait to see you there August 11th. Get fired up.
morning, everybody. I'm glad to be in God's house with you today. Amen, everybody? Come on, to God be the glory, right? Thank you, Jesus. Those of you joining us online, we're so glad you're joining us today. Before I get started today, we have some special guests with us, and I'm so grateful to have them. I'm glad to have my, my good buddy, Pastor, well, I call him Pastor, he's evangelist, uh, he, Peter Gammons, he's been a blessing, and he's from England and lives now in the Four Corners area, and he's a dear friend, and he's, you're going to see him a lot, okay? He preached the largest crusade ever in history of seven million people in uh, the Philippines. Is that amazing to anybody else? I mean, we're glad to have you, Dr. Gammon. He's becoming a dear friend very quickly. And then I made some new friends today. Who's, who's into making new friends? I, 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 I think we're gonna see him again, but this is Pastor Anwar at Fasil. Did I say it right? And they've got their whole family here and they're from Pakistan, guys. They, and isn't that exciting to have them here today? Him and his family, their, his precious wife, Nidia, right? They, they pastor the largest church in Pakistan. Is that amazing? And they have a Christian network and four children. They are so nice. They're not like crazy kids. They're really cool kids. Great job. <laughs> you guys are awesome. But uh, they're here with us today. And I'm just thrilled to see whatever the Lord is connecting in our relationship with you guys. We're just thrilled to connect with you and honored to have you here. And I want to ask a favor, Family Christian Center Church, would you pray for them with me? Because you understand there's a lot of turmoil. And when you try to preach the gospel, you, you, your life is in jeopardy. And not everybody's excited. In America, they may give you a putter's clap for that, but in other nations, they don't, right? I'm, we're together, right? So I want to pray for them right now. Can we do that? Father, we thank you for this precious family. We ask for, some, some of our elders, come lay hands on them and some of our leaders. We ask for your safety and your protection over this family today. God, I thank you that you're with them and we ask for angels to watch over them and protect them and Father, we ask for your hand to be upon them and thank you for the great work that you are doing in Pakistan through them. Thank you for the Christian network, which has the potential of reaching 700 million people with the gospel. We pray that you would provide for this family, you'd bless this ministry, meet all their needs. We pray, oh God, that, you, that, that angels would be around them 24 seven God and around their leaders and their people and that you would give them a favor which is beyond explanation that you would move O Holy Spirit of the living God we ask heaven's divine blessing on them now and thank you God that you'll never leave us nor forsake us you'll be with them always we speak the blessing of heaven we stand with them as a church body saying you're protected You'll, you'll be provided for. You'll do, fulfill the will of God and we cheer you on in the spirits and you're gonna do great things for God. Let their children be mighty. Father, bless them and use them for the glory of God today we pray. Come on everybody, in Jesus' name. If you agree with me, say amen to that prayer. Come on, amen, glory be to God. Come on, glory be to God. We're honored to have you here. Thank you for what you're doing for the gospel. Oh, that's cool, huh? Well, I want to talk to you for a minute. I'm grateful to be here today. I'm grateful for you playing behind me too. You're a blessing, man. I, thank you for AJ, Jesus. I was just in Ohio this week and I had the privilege of ministering to some of the greatest Christian ministers from all over the world. It was very wonderful. And then I flew in on Saturday and like you, I was horrified. Horrified's the right word for me to just see that our former president, somebody tried to kill him. I thought, dear God in heaven, this is crazy. That our, our dis, our seeing things differently would cause us to hate one another. It reminded me, you know, it reminded me of Cain and Abel, right? It, my brain went back really quick and was like, 
how, how could you kill a brother? But a brother did it. I remember his blood was crying out. And I just thought, well, how sad. And, and then some people were happy. I thought, you've lost your humanity when you can be happy about anybody going through. I mean, I'm not even going to say left or right. I'm going to say this or that. I mean, you shouldn't feel that way for anybody to be. Dear God, what, what have we become? So I say to myself, Christian, I'm talking to the Christians. If you're an unbeliever listening, I'm glad you're listening. But I'm talking to the Christians here today. And you, you, you listen to me, a non-believer too. But Christian, lean in and listen. You're supposed to be different than the world. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 13, you're the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown at and trampled by men. You see, salt, they didn't have refrigeration like we did in those days, and they would put the salt on the meat to preserve it. And then salt also had a second function to improve the taste. I think about that scripture, taste and see that the Lord is good. People should experience Jesus because you and I are trying to be mature sons and daughters of God in the earth. And they should say, wow, I sense Jesus. Not just by my words, but by my actions. How many words are cheap? Actions, they cost something, right? I, I, just because you have a fish on the back of your car don't mean anything anymore to me. Sometimes, anyway. <laughs> but I, I think about that. You and I are supposed to preserve, if you will, the earth for God's purpose and plan and destiny. And we're supposed to let people taste and experience the goodness of God through our lives. And then I thought about another scripture, and it's so appropriate. We're teaching on parables, and Jesus gave us these to read today. But in Matthew 5, 14 through 16, says, you, talking about you, Christian, you're the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Whenever I'm coming into Claremont at night, how many know it's lit up, baby? I can see it. I can't miss it. And Christian, you should be lit up. And nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a, a basket. Don't hide who you are. But put it on a light stand and it gives light to all who are there in the house. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. So, I don't rejoice that our former president, they tried to assassinate him, dear God in heaven. For those who do that, hatred should never be your foundation stone. And Christianity and hatred don't go together, so you really need to go behind the spiritual woodshed and have an examination of heart. I mean that with all kindness, but in all truth. You need the truth right now. Because how can you love God who you haven't seen and hate your brother who you have seen? That's what the Bible says. And that's what we're going to go with today. And so today, I want to pray for our former president. I want to pray for our nation. And I hope that doesn't offend you because you're a Christian before you are anything else today. And if, and if that offends you, you need to make an adjustment. Because I would pray, I would do the same thing if President Biden was shot. I'd be like, I would be appalled. You should feel the same way. You, you, you are supposed to be salt and a light. And then I think about, guys, I think about the person who was there just to watch who died. That's not right. What is wrong? It's sin and wickedness has come into the heart of people. And I don't see it changing unless there's a revival in the land. And the only way I know that to happen are Christians to be rooted and grounded in their faith. They can't be ashamed of the gospel. They can't hide their light under a basket. I need you to be who you are in your workplace. I need you to be who you are in your restaurants, in the grocery stores, when you're getting gas. Oh, you don't have to be obnoxious and per se a Bible thumper, but man, let the glory of God manifest through you in the earth. These are times when leadership needs to be shown. 
We don't hide and act like it didn't happen. Oh no, it happened on our watch. Pray for your nation. And, and I'm gonna tell you, pray about who, who's gonna become our next president in November. You pray right now. You don't pray the day after the election. You pray right now. Okay, it's just like taking a test and praying after you turned it in. You don't pray after you turned it in. What, are angels going to change your answers? I don't know, but you pray before and you ask God to give you the wisdom. And so you pray and, well, who do you vote for? I try to look at every candidate and say, how do they line up with the word of God? And I try to pick the person that I think best lines up with the word. And that's what I do. And so that's what I'm telling you to do from Congress to president to the, the city, the county, the state. Everything I do, I, I, I try to be prayerful. Judges, come on. Some of you don't even know who, who you're voting for or for judge. You better be careful because you may be before that judge one day. <laughs> Just saying, be a person who takes time to study and pray. And, you know, we live in the greatest country, I think, in the world. I'm grateful that I can have legally the chance to assembly today. To symbol right here. I'm grateful for that. Don't, I, I've traveled the world and not everybody has the precious privileges we do. Don't take them for granted because one day you could lose them if you take them for granted. So God bless America. God bring a revival into this nation and for my friends all over the world, all over the world. Not just our country, but the world. And I'd just like to pray with you. We need to pray for that family that God would comfort them that lost a loved one. We need to pray for those people that are in, in the hospital that God would just touch them today. Can we do that together? Come on, 10 of you, come on, right? Let's pray together. Father, thank you for the opportunity that we can come to you in prayer and that we're not abandoned, we're not left alone, but you're right here with us. You said where two or three are gathered in your name, there you are in the midst. You said if two of us will agree on earth is touching anything, it'll be done by our Father which is in heaven. We pray today, God, for former President Trump. God, thank you for protecting him and sparing him. We, we pray that he would quickly be healed, that you'd give the people around him wisdom and that you'd protect and watch over him. I ask for angels to watch over him and protect him today. We pray for... Oh, my heart just hurts so bad, Jesus. We pray for that family that lost a loved one right now. God, they were just at a rally. Please comfort them right now. I can't imagine the pain and the grief they're in right now. The Bible says the Holy Spirit is our comforter. Would you comfort that family today? I think about those that are in the hospital battling. Would you give those doctors and nurses and all those involved the wisdom of God? Would you please give them the gift of healing and touch their bodies, make them whole? Lord, expose darkness in our land. I pray that the wicked wouldn't thrive. Those that are being led by evil, they would not thrive, but righteousness would prevail in our nation. We pray for our leaders that you protect them everywhere. You'd watch over them. We pray that you would raise up men and women of God with hearts after God. We pray for those that are running in this election upcoming, God, that you would raise up the people that need to be raised up and you'd put the ones down that need to sit down. Please, God, give us leaders with a heart after God. We, Lord, realize that the Bible says, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain. And we know that's the same with our nation. Unless you help us, where can we go? What can we do? So with humble, humble hearts, we ask for a revival in our nation. God, would you eradicate the hatred that people have in their hearts towards people? Would you do something special that only the Holy Spirit can do in our nation? God, please turn people's eyes towards Jesus. Remove error and wickedness in this land. God, please do a miracle. Help people to turn their hearts towards you. People that have hardened their hearts, soften their hearts. God, we need a touch from heaven in our land. So we invite you, Holy Spirit. Chronicle says, we'll humble ourselves. We repent of our sin as a nation, O oh God, and ask for you to have mercy on us. 
So move, precious spirit of the living God, we pray in our land and even across this precious world. We thank you for our friends from Pakistan, our friend Peter Gammon, who's from England. We, we pray for the world. God, that you just touched this world. May the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ be mighty and powerful for the glory of God, we pray, Lord. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, everybody. Come on, to God be the glory today. You know, I was at this powerful conference this week, and um, out of all the nations of the earth, did you know that 182 nations, Christianity is growing faster than the population growth in 182 nations right now, right now. That's exciting. It's not all bad. <laughs> Well, keep your eyes on Jesus. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen, everybody? Well, I um, submitted my notes a while ago for today, and today's called The Unforgiving Servant that I want to talk to you about. And we'll start in Matthew chapter 18 with you, starting with verse 23. It says, Therefore, the kingdom of heaven, Jesus is speaking in a story like a parable, and he's some, it's like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And as he began the, the settlement, a man who owed 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Um, some scholars I read think that's equivalent to 20 years of wages, okay? That's a lot of potatoes, right, everybody? So that's the debt. And since he wasn't able to pay, the master ordered that his wife and children and all that he had to be sold to repay the debt. That'd be a troubling thing. You lose your car, your furniture, your TV, your house. I mean, you lose everything to pay your debt. And at this, the servant fell to his knees before him. Can, can you imagine the servant just getting down low before the king? Be patient with me, he begged, and I'll pay back everything. I don't know how you pay back 20 years of wages, but he thinks, I mean, he's begging, please have mercy with me. And the servant's master took pity on him and canceled the debt and let him go. I mean, that's a big debt for 20 years. And, and Jesus is in story mode to get people to understand some things spiritually. And, and I thought about the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and how I, I, I've sinned against God and I have a terrible debt I can't pay because of my sin. How many know one sin will send you to hell? Okay, in case you didn't know, that just takes one. I, I've got so many on record, I can't count anymore. Good morning. How about you? I lost count. And, and so my, 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 my debt's pretty heavy. There's nothing I can do in the natural to make it up. Am I, remember me, I was here last week. Remember me, everybody? We talked back and forth here. I, I, I can't keep up with it. And then, listen to this, but then... When that servant went out, I know he should have had a lot of gratitude. But he goes out and he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. Now the scholars I were reading think that's equivalent to a hundred days of wages. Twenty years, hundred days, got it. And he grabs him and begins to choke him. I can just imagine him grabbing him by the throat. You pay me my hundred days of bright color. Thinking to myself, how do you go from forgiveness to anger and such revenge? This is terrible. Pay back what you owe me. He demanded. His fellow servant, come on, look at this, fell to his knees and begged him, listen to these words, be patient with me and I'll pay it back. Did that sound familiar? Exact same words. And look at the response. He refused. And instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. How do you, how do you have such a huge forgiveness and the response is so terrible? No mercy, no kindness. No love, no compassion. 
Over a hundred days. I mean, no, that was more reasonable to pay off than 20 years. And when the other servants saw what happened, whoo, here we go, everybody. They were outraged. Come on, wouldn't you be outraged? I'd be ticked. It says they were outraged and went and told his master everything that had happened. And then the master called the servant in. Here we go. The reckoning has begun. Look at the first begin three words. You wicked servant. How many of the conversation's not going to go good when you start with that? <laughs> you wicked servant. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't it you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had it on you? In anger, his master handed him over the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all that he owed. Verse 35 says, this is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. These are some sobering words that we just read. Because we're like, oh yeah, the money, yeah, yeah, you're a bad dude. And then he says, he, he pulls a 360 on us. Oh, I'm not talking about money, I'm talking about forgiveness. We're like, what? That touches all of us here. Come on, turn the wheel quick. I have had some people be very evil towards me. Trying to destroy me. I don't even... Some people I don't even know. I, I, I bet if we had a conversation, I bet if we had a conversation, you'd probably tell me the same things happened to you. <laughs> Shake your head at me if that's true. It's just, there's a lot of wickedness. And got it. Some of you have been treated so terribly, Words would be inadequate to respond to what you say to me. And all I would be able to do is probably hug you and cry with you because I'm just broken. Just broken. And I, I wouldn't try to just fill it in with words because words just aren't enough. And I have compassion for people that have been harmed and gone through such tragic, terrible things. But it's very easy to fall into the trap of transitioning from your experience to pain and to bitterness and hatred. You gotta be so careful about that. So as a man of God, I have to humbly share with you. I have compassion for you, but I, I entreat you, I implore you, I beg you, don't live in, in, in hatred and bitterness because of the offenses that people have done against you. I beg you as a man of God, don't do that because you are harming your soul. And I don't wanna see you hurt. I want you to be okay. So I'm compassionate and it shouldn't have happened to you. And I'm so deeply sorrowful that it did, but you cannot allow that to become who you are. You are bigger than your experience. Did you hear that? You're more than your experiences that you've had in your life. You see, the one gentleman was forgiven. And I think about that. I've been forgiven a lot. I lost count of how many sins Jesus forgave me of. I'm still repenting at times. How about you? Man, just drive on 50. Come on, everybody, right? <laughs> it's been rough lately. <laughs> like, oh, God, help me. It don't even seem to that matter what time of day it is anymore now. <laughs> I, I, I got to choose to be like Jesus. I, I pray for that. Oh, Lord, no. I said, Jesus, bless that driver. Make them better in Jesus' name. Come on, everybody. Protect them from themselves right now, Lord. But I, I can't let bitterness be my portion because I've been forgiven so much. And so if I've been forgiven, I'm expected to carry that forgiveness with me on the journey as I encounter other people. I'm supposed to receive it in new situations and give it in new situations because the Bible says to whom much is given much is required yes. don't measure it up with things in the world you measure up everything with the word of God 
Because if you measure it up the world, you're going to feel real good about yourself. Well, I can do that because so-and-so did. No, 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 no. I don't see that person's name in the Bible where if they do that, you can do that. No. You, your standard's the Word of God. I should have had more than three amens, but thank you for the three of you that engaged in that. I appreciate you. Come on, your standard's the Word of God, right? All right, we're back on page here. So today, we got to forgive. We got to be the light. We got to be the salt. We got to be different today, gang. So... The question we should be, begs us to think about, how do we forgive like Jesus? Let me give you three thoughts this morning. The first one, pray for those who hurt you. Oh, I'll pray for them. Lord, let fire. No, that's. <laughs> Remember when the disciples started to do that and Jesus was like, hold up. I'm not calling you to call fire down. Come on, how many know calling fire feels good, right everybody? <laughs> Jesus said this in Luke 6, 28, bless those who curse you and pray for those who hurt you. Now, let's, let me go on record. That's not easy. <laughs> That's tough. And can I tell you, my flesh would prefer not to participate. Amen. <laughs> my flesh wants to just poke them in Jesus' name. Come on, everybody. But that's what the Bible says today. And we go by the standard of heaven, not the standard of men. Come on, everybody, right? So Matthew 5, 43 and 44 says this. You've heard it said, it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy, right? But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. That's God's standard, gang. We pray for those that have hurt us. We pray that their eyes would be open. We pray that they would come to a relationship with Jesus Christ. We pray that they would be born again. We pray that the power of God would overcome. Come on. Saul, who was the greatest persecutor of, of Christians, he became a believer and his name was changed to Paul. And on that road to Damascus, the Bible says, how many know God answers prayer? So God can take the Saul's of life and he can make them the Paul's of life. He can still do that today. How many know Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever? Come on, everybody, right? Some of your greatest enemies could be some of your greatest friends. I've seen it happen with my own eyes. May you see it too. So number one, pray for those that are doing stuff crazy against you. You pray for them, right, who hurt you. Here's the second thing. Forgive as you have been forgiven. Have you been forgiven? Oh, good. <laughs> then you know what you got to do. You got to forgive just like you've been forgiven. Don't be, like, don't be like that guy who had 20 years forgiven. That's not who you want to model your Christianity after. Colossians 3.13, forgive one another. And if any one of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. Somebody say amen, right? 1 John 4, 19 says, we love him because he first loved us. How many know Jesus loved you before you gave your life to him? He pursued you. And there's some, some people you're going to have to forgive before they say, I'm sorry. And I'm, I'm going to give you some news that may not be good to hear, but some people will never say, I'm sorry. And it's their loss, but don't make it yours too. They're losing a blessing because you're quality people. You got to keep your quality about you, that godliness inside of you and stay full of the Holy Spirit. Amen, everybody. Third and final thought, forgive by faith. Here's the word, by faith. We do everything by faith because forgiveness is not always a feeling. Sometimes I want to smack somebody in Jesus' name. I don't want to forgive them in Jesus' name. I don't like them. I don't like them. Come on, right? I don't want to sit next to them. I don't want to talk to them. I don't want to be near them. I don't like them. How I many know we got to forgive them by faith? Hebrews 11 one says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things, what did it say? Not seen. So I'm, I may be mad as a hornet and I'm like, I don't even like this person. 
Fine, Jesus, I choose to forgive them by faith in the name of Jesus. What if you feel, how do you feel afterwards? Sometimes I feel like the weight of the world's off my shoulders. And sometimes in all truth, I'm madder than when before I prayed. <laughs> Why are you mad? Because I start rehearsing it or thinking about it. And I'm like, oh, and I forgot about that. <laughs> like, darn it, Lord, help me. What do you do? I load up again. Lord, I'm madder than I first started. Here I am again. I choose to forgive by faith as an act of my will. I, I forgive them for hurting me. I forgive them for offending me or harming me. I choose to let it go and move forward in Jesus' name by faith. That's how you pray. And you may have a feeling, you may not. But it's like Revelation says that Jesus is knocking on the door, right? And it's like the Holy Spirit is wanting to come into that area of pain, but he's a gentleman and he comes where he is invited. And your words and your sincerity invite him to areas of darkness. But when you keep, oh, I'm going to just, oh, bless God, I'm not going to let go. I'm going to do what I want. I mean, no, you have bolted the door shut for the spirit of God to move. And he's a gentleman. And so we, we open our hearts and say, Jesus, I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be bitter. I don't want to have hatred. I don't want to carry this around. I, oh, it's hard, but Lord. Jesus, come in and change my heart. Can you see that? That's when the Spirit of God begins to move. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, we walk by faith and not by sight. I promise you, if you'll start to put that before God, I don't want to have this stuff anymore. I don't want to hate this person or hate this person or hate this. I don't want to carry that. I'm called to be light not a barrier of dark, a, a carrier of darkness. That's, that's not my calling. My calling is to be a light bearer, to be encouragement, to be hope, to be healing. I mean, we need that more than ever before. So guys, if we can do that with other believers, we can do that with, around the world around us. I challenge you to be difference makers, to do something great for God, because I believe the world like never before needs to see Jesus through you and me. Amen, everybody? Come on, to God be the glory today. Amen, everybody? I want to pray for you this morning, if I could. Father, today, we welcome you, Holy Spirit, to touch our hearts. God, we don't we don't want to carry bitterness. We don't want to carry unforgiveness. Hatred towards fellow man. That's not your way. Would you forgive us when we've acted like the man who had 20 years of wages forgiven and were hypocritical towards others? Would you forgive us for that attitude? We've been forgiven much, and we need to forgive much as well. I ask for your forgiveness over us, God, today. Forgive us where we've blown it. Forgive us where we haven't shown and represented Jesus properly. We ask that you would cleanse us from all unrighteousness in those areas. May the light of God flow through us. May the love of God penetrate through us. May people take note, just like they did in Acts, that we have been with Jesus. May forgiveness flow freely through us because you've forgiven us and you told us to forgive others. Today, we invite you in to touch our hearts, Holy Spirit. We hear your, your knocking and we invite you in. Holy Spirit, come and touch us today in the name of Jesus. Touch every heart hurt, heart, hardened heart. Thank you, Lord, that you listen and you care about us and you're watching over us right now. In this moment, just between you and God, maybe there's been some people that have done you wrong. Could I encourage you to take this moment to say, Lord, I choose to forgive and you can insert their name for what they did to me. They hurt me. 
They made me mad. They upset me. They harmed me. I choose to forgive them by faith. Maybe you're going to start seeing things in your mind or rehearsing things from the past. Maybe you feel like you've already taken care of it, but some reason it came back up today. Just go with it, man. Just deal with it. Say, God, I choose to forgive. And whoever that is, just take this as a healing moment to let God's spirit just begin to touch you in a deep manner. We choose to forgive by faith today, God, for what people have done to us and how they've hurt us. But if God impresses individual things, just, just flow with it and deal with it. We want to be godly. We want to represent you well. We choose to forgive by faith today. Holy Spirit, we invite you in this environment. Just touch each person right now in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you that you care and you're listening and you're helping us today. We welcome you, oh God. Touch us today for the glory of God, we pray right now. Come on, if you agree with me, say a hearty amen right now. Amen. amen. God, do it for your glory inside of our hearts. Could we just continue in that posture of prayer? Would you pray that anybody watching online or here, I want you to be my par partner with me right now. Would you pray that anybody who's not giving their lives to Jesus, they would do that right now? Would you pray anybody who's not in right relationship with the Lord, they'd make a fresh commitment to Christ. Would you pray that right now? Would you pray that anybody who's just hurting with bitter and hatred, that God would touch them right now? Just let the whole Lord lead your prayer. I don't want to talk to some of you here in this building watching online. There's people literally watching all over. Can I tell you today that God's spirit is wanting to touch you and encourage you today? God doesn't want you hurting. He wants to heal you and make you whole and help you today. There's people today you feel like God is so far away from you. Can I tell you, I, I believe he's closer than you think he is. And today I visualize Jesus with his arms open wide to you. And all you have to do is come make your way back to Jesus. Where do we start in this journey? Well, first you've got to believe that Jesus is God's son, that he died on the cross and he rose again and he's alive right now. And if you believe that, you are ready to take a next step. And you have to understand, God's spirit is already working in your life supernaturally. There's a seed of faith that's been dropped inside of you. And now you take a next step. That's where you acknowledge you need Christ in your life. That's where you ask God to forgive you. In a moment, I'm going to pray a prayer. I'll help you articulate the words. All you have to do is repeat that prayer. Mean it from your heart. Pray to God with all sincerity, and I believe God will answer your prayer right now and give you a brand new start. There's people I believe in this room and watching that you'd say, Pastor Rick, I believe those things you said that Jesus is God's son. He rose from the dead. I truly believe those things, and today, for the very first time, I want to say yes to Jesus. I want Jesus in my life. I want to invite him to come into my heart. Would you please pray for me? It would be my joy and honor to pray for you. That's why we're here. There's another group of people that you say, at some point I asked Christ in my life, but I'm not living right. I am so convicted my heart, in my heart, and I know I need to hit a reset button. I need to rededicate my life to God. Would you please pray for me? I want to recommit my life to Christ. I just feel compelled by the Holy Spirit, and I, I, I'm going to honor God the conviction I have or the things I know, I'm just, I need to honor God and start again. Would you pray for me? If that's you this morning and I'm talking to you and you know in your heart of hearts, you, you want to give your life to Christ for the first time or you feel compelled by God to rededicate your life to God, no one's looking around. Please continue to pray, everybody. I need you. If that's you right now and you want me to pray for you, I want you to boldly lift your hand up high and let me know who I'm praying for today. Yeah, God bless you. I'll pray for you. I'm looking around the room today. Yeah, God bless you. Just looking around the room. How about on the balcony over here? Yeah, God bless you. God bless you. Yeah, anybody else over here? God bless you. Yeah, God bless you. God bless you. Yeah, just going around the room. God bless you. Yeah, God bless you. How about on the balcony over here? God bless you. 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 Yeah, God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else today? I don't want to miss anybody. A lot of people today. Can we all pray this together out loud? But especially those who raised their hands, would you say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. 
I believe you died for me and that you rose again and you're alive right now. Please come into my heart, forgive me of my sins, change my life, help me to be the person you want me to be and fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Come on, everybody. That's something to be excited about. Thank you, Jesus, for all the lives that you just touched. You were just guided through the salvation prayer. If you gave your heart to Jesus today, you just made the best decision ever. You may be wondering, what's next? Well, we have you covered. Scan the code on the screen and learn how to grow in your relationship with Jesus. If you want to connect with someone personally, you can text FCC Guest to 97000 to connect with our team. Now is the time in our service when we prepare to give our tithes and offerings. Now is the time in our service when we prepare to give our tithes and offerings. If this is your first time tuning in with us, please feel no obligation to give. This service is our gift to you. If you call FCC your church and you want to participate in giving today, you can text FCC Give to 97000 or you can give securely online at FCCLive.com forward slash give. I'm going to take this time to pray over our offering. Heavenly Father, I just come before you humbly and I just want to thank you for this service. And I pray a blessing over the tithes and offerings that are given today. May it be blessed to further your kingdom and bless the hands of the house that provided this offering today. In Jesus' mighty name I pray, amen. If you'd like prayer today, you can text FCC Prayer to 97000 and a member of our prayer team will reach out to you. Thanks for joining us for church today. We hope you have the best week ever.